Hey everybody, this is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. And if you want to get your money's worth, you'll stay right here. WNS Podcast. <laughs> Everybody's got a price for the Million Dollar Man. You're listening to the official Wrestling News Source Podcast. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com or find us on Facebook by searching WrestlingNewsSource.com or WNS Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Daniel Heron, Tyler Bear, and Doug. That's right. What's up, everyone? I am Daniel Heron. I slap my butt. I'm Tyler Bear. I'm Doug. And we're welcoming you, welcoming you to episode 149 of the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com. Check us out on Facebook, WrestlingNewsSource.com. You can find us on Facebook, Davina Podcast. Facebook. Facebook. On YouTube, Davina's Video. And on iTunes, Wrestling News Source Podcast. We are also on the Twitter at WNS Podcast. And for the main site, <laughs> <laughs> WN Source. Um, also, it's uh, we're also on Stitcher now, so please go over there and check us out as well. Definitely. Leave us a review. It's certainly appreciated as well. So welcome to the show. Got a quite a bit to talk about here down in Texas. We finally got our little cold front coming through. So the weather's yeah, getting oh, chilly nowhere. and sucks. No kind of fun. So. Uh, speaking of that, uh, on Facebook, uh, I, I posted I, I'm loving this weather. And uh, what was it? Eric from Asteroid uh, Belt Company was like... Kanishni. Uh, Eric Kanishni. Yeah. What did you say before? It doesn't matter <laughs> what I said last time. Uh, what I'm saying say now. That it was, it was uh, 30 where he was where he lives. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> I think that's supposed to get that cold it's, tonight. It's like you've never seen that before. Uh, we have. We have. It's been, it's been that cold once or twice. I guess during the night. But yeah. But yeah. I guess he... We've had snow. Once. Yeah, <laughs> once in like the last yeah. five years. But no, twice in the past five years. Twice in the past five years. But we get it. Yeah. Doug knows. <laughs> uh, really, I guess by Thanksgiving or Christmas, uh, it's probably be warm, to be honest with you. Two years ago, during Christmas, it was warm. <laughs> it was like 68 degrees or something like that. That was the low. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, we get weird weather down here. So, uh, so welcome to the show. Doug, how you doing? Hanging in there? I'm okay. Yeah, working. Work hard for the money. Yep. Work hard for the money. There you go. So, uh, yeah. So, we've got quite a bit to talk about. First, we have some uh, some feedback that we'd like to get into. As always, we welcome the feedback. We appreciate the feedback. First one's coming to, I'm hoping I'm saying this right, Gerard Man. G-I-R-A-R-D. Gerard? Yeah. Sure. Uh, from YouTube saying, this is my very first ever podcast I've ever heard or listened to. I've listened to some... Uh, I have to listen to more of the wrestling podcast. Thanks, guys, for doing this podcast. Thank so you. That's always nice. We certainly cool, appreciate cool. that. Yeah. Woo! So, uh, do we want to be someone's podcast? The we, first podcast? We're we're the first. Isn't that like... There's no going back. Yeah, I know. Like, do we want to be someone's first podcast, though? I don't know. That's like taking that's like taking someone's virginity or something, right? Like, <laughs> we don't do even we want... know you. I mean, it's just kind of... Pop that you know, cherry. We're just... We're taking it. And uh, so, you know, I hope you, hope you can... Uh, Admit to it later on down the road that we were your first. and uh, Remember us. We'll call you. I'm not know. sure that we want to be anybody's first. <laughs> we don't want to be anybody's first or last, right? Maybe Why wouldn't we way. want to be their last? Like, I mean, unless they just completely stop altogether. Like, I've listened to this one, and I'm not listening to any others after this. I, I heard that in a movie once. I don't know where the guy's like, I don't want to. But he was talking about sex. He didn't want to be his first <laughs> or last. Mm. So I thought it was a good rule of thumb for a podcast as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. That could be. But what we call? I mean, we were the first three-day waiting period or something. I don't know. Has that already <laughs> passed? What's the rules on that, on being the first? Uh, on sex? No, on podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make up the rules. <laughs> Apparently, we don't know the rules about sex okay. or podcast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do not ask us about podcast. We just know that it happens, sex. and sometimes we're involved with it. That's about <laughs> as far as it goes. So, uh, But thank you for the feedback. We also have some feedback from uh, Andre... I have no idea how to pronounce this. Uh, Iera? I, E-R-E-I-R-A? Sorry for saying your name wrong. Yeah, my bad. I'm not good at pronouncing names. Uh, but Andre says, Long-time listener, first-time commentator. Listen to you guys since you started and have listened to every episode. Always enjoy your opinions and knowledge of wrestling. Thanks, guys, for doing what you do. So Thanks. thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much, Andre. It's really cool. nice of you. We appreciate um, it. You know, it's, it's good to... Uh, Noah, 
it's good to uh so Noah's calling and you're just yeah. gonna ignore it? Oh, we get Noah on the show right now? Yeah. Okay. Whoops. Blow like it was me. Okay. Well he hung up. Uh no, it's good to, you know, hear people that's listened from the beginning. Actually, yeah. there's a lot of people that listen from the beginning we actually haven't heard from yeah before and it, it's good to hear that and yeah it's really so if cool you, if, if, if you know if you're a constant listener and you've never commented or something let us know we need we like to know who's listening it's yeah. always you know refreshing to hear from new people so yeah. if this is your first time listening to us if this is the 149th time you've listened to yeah. us you know we certainly appreciate it we want to hear from you i only um, assume that the people who have like messaged or posted on our stuff or actual listeners so i assume we have like 20 listeners yeah and that's it we just have that core group you know uh we did have a a, a comment on uh on our youtube video that someone was the first view so or at least the first person to comment so at least that's the thing that we've reached the status that we're now getting those first comments how does, how does that make Did you, you pay feel? someone off or something? I didn't pay anybody. Are you kidding me? I'm broke. <laughs> I'm waiting for payday. Waiting for WWE to send me a check. For, yes, waiting for my paycheck to come in so I can immediately spend You're it. You're going to be old. On WrestleMania. So now I assume we have 21 listeners because of, what's his name? Andre. Thanks, Andre. Number yeah. 21 with a bullet. <laughs> and Gerard Man as well. Gerard. So was that 22. be 22? I assume we have 22 listeners so there you go so uh, certainly do appreciate it we do appreciate the feedback so if you're listening to us on itunes you know give us a review let us know how you think we're doing if you're on uh, stitcher give us a rating give us a little review so that Have way you checked those recently uh i checked yes i checked stitcher earlier today i checked itunes uh as we started the show uh nothing new going on right now so hopefully that'll change in the uh in the next coming week so um so yeah so welcome, if the, you know, to all the new listeners. I know uh, WrestlingNewsSource.com has been getting a ton of new likes on their Facebook page. Um, they broke a hundred thousand likes over the course of the, like at the beginning of the week. And when already... you uh, get past certain uh, numbers or whatever, it automatically puts on your site that you passed a milestone, right? Or no. do you put something? Because I swear that. Uh, on our site, it uh, it's it said that when we got past two thousand, I, I you did put that. that. Yeah, like not like it's not like a post. It was yeah. it. W- it's a milestone. An event. It's okay. a, yeah. You, oh, you go into the events okay. and say that you hit a milestone. Okay. So yeah, so that's what it was. But uh, but yeah, like earlier this week, or at the end of last week, we hit a hundred thousand likes on the Facebook page, and we're already up to one hundred thirty thousand. So like all these new listeners. It's insane where they're coming from. Just watching the numbers just constantly go up. So uh, if you're listening to us for the first time, thanks for checking us out. We do appreciate it. And uh, I know that we got likes and stuff, and I, I don't know if <laughs> the 2,100 and something people all listen to us, but uh, welcome. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I know there's a lot of people where I don't know how to pronounce your name because I don't <laughs> even know how to read the letters that are in your name at all. <laughs> they're like symbols. Uh, but welcome. <laughs> All right, so there you go. So uh, we're going to kick things off with uh, the contest that we had last week, or actually two weeks ago that we started and it ended uh, today. So, uh, you know, first off, I want to thank everyone who participated. We got three participants. Uh, we got Andrew, a.k.a. Wife Swap, Blake, and Hugh. Um, very quiet in their promos. It almost... I, got, I got the feeling that everyone's like... I hope no one hears me saying this <laughs> stuff. It's like someone walks in and be like, what are you doing? Uh, I'm cutting uh, a promo as John Dynamite. So what? That in itself oh, would be embarrassing. So, <laughs> so that by itself would just be just awful. Right. Uh, just, you know. I mean, I, I can't Like, I can say- understand you want to do a promo as Ultimate Warrior Macho Man, something like that. But have someone coming in and be like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm doing a promo for a created character whom I've never seen. Just... <laughs> what after the fact i thought like it would have been awesome if we had had like as part of the prizes we would get get like a a mock-up of john dynamite like an artist <laughs> rendition and have like tyler sign eight by tens as john dynamite <laughs> we, sh- we shouldn't oh, have totally done that man we take a screenshot a good or something idea. yeah we'll make eight by tens and have tyler yes. sign you know what i john never got to do i should have went back and like uh put in like from like one of the first games I got and where he was there and like taking like you said take a picture of each one but I forgot yeah. to do that evolution of yeah. John Dynamite. One of these days we're gonna get eight buttons and have time. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll yes. go out, that'll go out with the prize. So um but yeah so 
you know, we to, had... to be clear, we don't actually have these, and these aren't going yeah. out with the prize this time. <laughs> At least not yet. Yeah. Unless we work fast. Um, We're so... not working fast. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but yeah. We're procrastinators. So we asked for for people to send in their promos, deliver a little promo as John Dynamite. Got quite a you know got got three uh, three people to entertain us. For Which a I gotta bit. say, so I know I know for a fact that we have twenty two listeners, <laughs> <laughs> but only three saw fit. Yeah, because like our contest. Because how many of them well, already have shirts? That's true. That's so, true. Of our core group. So, but anyways. Um, so, since the number was low, we discussed this, and, uh... You all owe us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. Right. So, but as far as a winner, you know, Tyler, I know this is your character, so, you know, what, what, what would you like to make the announcement as yeah, to who the would. winner is? Um... Well, everybody. Everybody's a winner in my book. Everybody in the club game Everybody. Tipsy? Everybody. Yeah. All right. So, so all, a three-way tie yes. for the winner. Mm -hmm. All three of you getting shirts. Hell yeah. Thank you for participating. Shame on you the rest of the 22. <laughs> yeah. We had quite a few uh, views on uh, on our YouTube page. So we know someone's listening out there and they didn't participate. So uh, this is the reward for the people who did take the yes. time to go out and uh, and cut a promo as John Dynamite. John, John Dynamite. Dynamite. And we will... Kapow! Do I, I do. I do have to give Wife Swap uh, some extra props. He was <laughs> in the trouble. Prop. For, he was in the trouble of making a prop and everything. <laughs> yeah. So, um. Yeah. And also, I found Wife Swaps uh, especially hilarious because <laughs> his was like full of sexual innuendo, and then you could hear like his kids in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "Oh no!" Well, at least he was keeping it down. Here's the and then the camera out. goes down. I'm like, "Oh shit! Please don't. He's not taking his penis out." I mean, what is he? <laughs> we're getting dirty here but thanks wife swap thanks hugh thanks blake blake yeah so all three did a good job we're gonna be Thank getting in for, touch with all of y'all getting your getting your address getting everything we need to get and uh so sizes so yeah so be on the lookout for that so congratulations thanks for participating everyone's a winner in tyler's book Yay. so uh so there you go so we kick off uh the show with going into raw talking about what happened as they broadcast from the uk energetic crowd you know they had who, a are you? Huh? who are who you are you are you yeah they definitely chanted that so um you know we kick things off with randy orton coming out cutting a bland promo and he's interrupted <laughs> by brad maddox it was i know was i just that is, it's funny how you said it on i, I know it's true just though no, just, just just there's no laughs yeah. it's true it's like it's yeah. bland <laughs> Just yeah. bland, moving th straight through it. Not even, no interest in it. So uh, he's interrupted by Brad Maddox, who's interrupted by Kane, who's interrupted by Vicky Guerrero, who all decide that no one is in charge because they don't know who is in charge. It's, it was, I'm going to be honest, that part throughout the whole uh, Raw was just weird. Mm -hmm. Because if you had to think about it, in my opinion, I would think Kane would be in charge. Okay. With as this a, title. As the director of operations? Yes. Whereas... The general manager of Raw did not get to decide what happened. Because aren't they like kind of down on Maddox? Like they just give him shit all the time, Triple H. And... But they tell him to do stuff, but like, you know, he's always like, sorry for this and that. And mm -hmm. like just tough on him or whatever. I don't know. I, I just thought Kane would be in charge, to be honest with you. Okay. How about you, Doug? Who do you think should have been in charge? Who. Like, who do I think should have been in charge? Yeah. Well, Maddox, he's the general manager of Raw. Okay. Um, it was certainly weird, though. Um, <clears throat> Braddock's... Uh, Braddock's... <laughs> Maddox... Jonamite and Braddox. <laughs> God, I can't... Oh, this is not a great start for me. Um, Maddox, like, should be in charge. It's his show. He's the GM. Um, he's certainly in a weird position because... It felt like he was kind of baby facing uh, at the jump of Raw, and then later on he kind of like went hill and he's like, "Oh yeah, let's screw these other dudes over because mm -hmm. I like what Kane's saying." So I, I can't get a like a great feel for what he's supposed to be exactly. Right. I think it's uh, too blurred or not well enough to find his role, uh, which I guess it hasn't necessarily been a problem because he's rarely like, in a prominent role. Right. But whenever you ask him to be, it's kind of like, 
what am I supposed to be getting from this guy? Well, it seemed it seemed to me like more he was playing off of the crowd whenever he was in that first segment because they were cheering and they were giving him a positive response as opposed to Vicky or Kane. Yeah. yeah well, I don't think – yeah, but I don't think that Maddox is allowed enough, like – He's, he Leeway. doesn't have the liberty of like going with what the crowd says. You know right. what I mean? Like, um, I don't know. I think it's weird for sure. I think he was like, oh, he was definitely acting like a babyface, like at the jump, and uh, I kind of sort of started acting like a heel towards the middle, which I, I'm not a big fan of. Um, I think it was like ill-defined, like I said. Mm-hmm. Uh, if anything, I thought that Vicky came across as the babyface, yes. like, and the, the yes. crowd booed the shit out of Vicky. <laughs> but she was there acting as the the lone like baby face like I'm gonna le- give you leadership. the people what they would really like. Yeah, to like see. we've well, been they did s- cheer we've for seen... that part whenever like oh it's the the handicap yeah. match. Well, mm-hmm. they they basically booed her. She came out and she's like, oh, you yeah. guys have been getting over and over on everybody for weeks and weeks and weeks. Now I'm gonna flip the script on you while Trips and uh, Stephanie is gone and they booed her anyway. It was just, it was weird it, for sure. It was a w- really weird situation. Also, like, I wonder what they're going to do with Kane, you know? It's like they and put the him in this position, and then what? It's like, is he done wrestling? Is, like, this way, is this his I way I mean, I like how he looks, out? though. I mean, I I don't know. No, I don't Kane in he, a suit. I don't think he's done wrestling. I just think, like, what else are they going to do with the guy? Nothing. Give him something new. This is, I mean, it's new, though. <laughs> but yeah, it was kind of weird seeing, like, you know, Maddox come out, try to portray the face. Kane come out, try and get the heat, and then Vicky, who instantly gets heat no matter what she does, does the baby face. the baby face thing, and then gets cheered for it. So, I don't know. And not to mention, she's the general manager of SmackDown. They, they continue to boo her, which I understand that Vicky like doesn't have necess- it doesn't feel like Lick- Vicky has a, a leg to stand on because she's only the general manager of SmackDown. Yeah, I understand that, but they turn they cheered what she said and then went back right back to booing her. I was like, I felt like, you know, she's, you know, if it's anything, she's voice. given them a come up. It's in this situation. So they should have cheered the lady. Yeah. It was weird for sure. Um, I don't think it accomplished much. Um, it just set up for the, for the matchup. That was pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, I just thought it was weird. I don't know. Hmm. Do you guys think that the, uh, Triple H and Stephanie on vacation is going to extend to, more than one week? Well, I think the idea of giving Triple H and Stephanie a vacation is to say, well, it's time for some of these baby faces to be able to get the one up on the heels because right. with them there, they're there pushing everyone's dirt, like face in the dirt. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, continuously, like, they can't, yeah. they can't get one over on the heels with them there because they're there in full force and they're right. directing traffic and they're like, no, fuck you, fuck you, fuck <laughs> you. And with them You're saying cool. they're gone, like, this is like the week for the baby faces to like, you know, get their chance. Get at least like equal footing with these guys. Yeah, and then uh, you know they'll they'll come back and be like, "We leave for one week or two weeks," and you know this is the state of the of the WWE. Well, I certainly don't think they're going to go multi weeks. I thought it was just used as a chance to. I have a feeling that they're going to gripe at. They're going to gripe at Maddox more than likely, because yeah. I don't know if they're going to gripe at Kane and then, but. And I don't even know if they're going to gripe at Orton. <laughs> no. So, but anyway, so that leads into the uh, to the first matchup. Uh, Randy Orton in a, ha- a handicap match against Goldust and Cody Rhodes. Randy Horton. Randy Horton? Here's a who. Okay. So, uh, you know, first matchup, not too bad of, a, of an opener. Uh, Orton takes the count out to, to lose and then is attacked yeah. by Big Show. Uh, but what did you guys think about the, uh, the matchup itself? Match was fine. <clears throat> um... I'm okay with them. Uh, it's a weird situation to be thrust into because it's always weird for me when the baby faces have the numbers advantage. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not something that you can just throw out there and do whatever with. It has. It, see, it feels like to me, at least in my opinion, you have to have a very specific structure to pull something like this off. It's fine because um, you're kind of giving a glimmer of hope to these baby faces who've been getting their, you know ass handed to them week in and week out. So it's kind of like, well, we have a chance to, you know, make them feel like they're on even footing. So it's okay to give them, I think, the handicap match here. And they played it straight, which is pretty much the only way you could do it. I'm glad that they uh, 
didn't break down into like a tornado thing, and they mm-hmm. they strictly strictly like played by the rules, which was um, tag for the in. advantage, tagging in, tagging out, keeping the five count on the tag, which is how they ended it with them bringing it in and like giving him the up and over to the outside. And he took the count out. It was just fine, like um, fine with him taking the count out because you don't want to see him. You know, beating your. Well, I was really scared that he was going to beat them both, and um, yeah. I don't think that's a good message to send that your tag team champions can be beat even yeah. by the champion. I had that feeling too. I was like, it's like I, I mean, the, I mean, tag team won, but I was, I was like, I don't know, Orton's gonna, Orton's gonna win. So I'm glad to see him take the. I really think it's the, the if this is what you're going to do, this is the only way that it works, and uh, not that it was excellent or anything, but they stuck to exactly. The only way that I felt like it could work, and they stuck to that, so I'm fine with it. Okay, and um, you know, as we said, Orton did get the uh, the count out loss, uh, but it was soon attacked by Big Show. You know, much to the delight of the crowd, uh, you know, throwing him into the Pretty stairs, sweet choke slam on. And- yeah, I gave him a choke slam through the uh, through the announce table, and uh, had to be looked at by medics afterwards. And that was sort of a reoccurring thing backstage. Um, you know, it certainly seemed like the uh, the big show was was over with the crowd. Um, you know, the UK crowd being very excited. Um, I know they did a lot of chants, and some of them some of them bugged me. Some of them I was fine with. Um, and I know we've had this discussion a, a, a few times in the past. Uh, but what did what did you think of overall of the crowd? Uh, they were really distracting for me in some sp- points. Um... There was a particular guy who was dead center on opposite the hard cam, so he's mm-hmm. always in focus in the dead middle of the ring. He's wearing a long sleeve gray shirt, and he was doing yes like the whole time. He never stopped, oh, yeah. which is not fine, but the whole time he, he never looked at the ring. You could see him. He was just looking, he was sure looking he at himself. The he was making sure he was on TV the whole time, and I was like, <laughs> well, what's the point of that? Yeah, I don't I know. Know. Why would you he's go? He's trying like, to get himself over. This is good to have fun. Th- I mean, I don't know. Like, I have my issues with the way fans choose to act. And, yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I I think that they think they're protesting or something, hmm. but I think that what's important for people to think they're protesting realizes if you paid, they don't care what you say while you're there because they have your money. Right. If you're going to make a statement, you don't pay to go to show up. Hmm. And if you, if you, if you hate so much that, you're going to waste so much of your time at the show not paying attention or being as distracting as possible or being as off subject as possible. Who's really the stupid one? Like you're st- why would you pay your money to go do that? Right. That's just my opinion. Like I feel free to, I know I've said that before and people are like, why do you hate fun so much? I was like, no, I like to have fun. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's fun. Just keep it relevant. I just, I, I think people just don't give a shit. They think they're having fun by just chanting stupid well, shit. I think and, people are think they think people think they're they are the show and they're not the show. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not. If I was there, I would be mad. I would like. I don't want to pay to sit in the crowd. Like and that. I was looking at some of the crowd that were that were not joining in on the uh, on the chants, and they were kind of just like, uh, okay, you know. But uh, like during the Orton match when they were like this, they were chanting boring and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. they were like. Chant, they did. They do the thing where they chant for the announcers. Like it always starts with JBL. They weren't even watching. They were like looking at They're JBL, pointing at like, him. "Hey, hey, look, we're cheering for you." And it's like, why? Who cares? Mm-hmm. JBL sucks half the time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, like if, if you know when Fandango's music hits and you want to do the little dance moves, that's fine. When Dane O'Brien's music hits and you want to chant, yes, that's fine. I mean, I think we're. I think it's fine to yes at any time. I think it's transcended Daniel Bryan. Right. They do it as a now big shows kind of embracing it sometimes, and I mean it's Bryan's thing, but it's like transcending him in the fact that it's like it's just a positive thing when something you like is happening. Then you yes, I'm fine mm-hmm. with that. Um, I'm really fine with anything that that's like relevant. But if you but if you feel like you're protesting, I don't understand why you're there. Because you protest with your wallet, that's yeah. first and foremost. Or if you feel like you don't care what, if you don't care with what's happening, or if you're bored with eighty percent of what's happening, then I think you're the stupid one for being there. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's, speaking of, I'm not paying my money to go see something I don't want to see. Right. And you know, and speaking of you know paying money and protesting from your wallet, 
you know, this is going to sidetrack us a little bit, but hey, what doesn't these days? Um, you know, they, they recently announced that um, Daniel Bryan got blamed for the low buy rates of, of the pay-per-views and stuff like that. Um, do you think that... Well, that's a rumor. They don't, they don't oh, announce yeah. that, hey, they this don't, is the guy we're blaming. They don't announce on the corporate website. So, by the way... This is the guy we've put yeah, the blame on. Yeah, this is, this is our scapegoat guy. Um, you know, do you feel that, you know, it was... I mean, to be honest, I feel that the, the cards were not built right and the outcome for some of the pay-per-views did not satisfy enough people. Not to mention you had three pay-per-views within like six weeks. So, you know, for them to blame one person that's on the card of, you know, say 20 people, I think that's just complete ludicrous. But what do you, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, number one, it's that part of the year where you get a bunch of, like you said, a bunch of pay-per-views like back to back to back. And they're all the not, uh, not mainstays. They're all those mm-hmm. like throwaway pay-per-views. Uh, so I don't think, I think it's a struggle for to make sure anyone's buying those. I don't think, I don't think this part of the year has ever been like high like buy rate time. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm not, a, I'm not a numbers mark. I don't follow the numbers. I don't care. Me I want to. I, I just want to be enthralled in the product. Yeah. Right. I don't give a fuck what the numbers are. Um. Now that being said. Like I just said, I'm not a numbers guy. I don't necessarily follow the numbers because I don't find a lot of interest in that Mm -hmm. uh, personally. But I've heard people who I trust their opinion and I trust what they say. I've heard people say that historically this part of the year is always low in ratings because of, I assume, football season, whatever other sports are are, um, going on right here. Like, I don't know. I don't give a fuck. I don't watch the NFL I don't watch whatever else, um, and I don't watch the numbers. So I frankly don't care as long as the product is interesting. So I think that is a factor. Too many too soon. Um, too much other, like, competing interests. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think they gave – I'm fine with the delayed gratification of a Daniel Bryan title win, uh, but I don't know how many people are. Like, I have a long attention span. Like, right. I like pro wrestling, and I'm going to stick with it. Like – like I, that's just the kind of fan I am. Like I'm just I'm going to watch every week because I watch wrestling and that's yeah. what I do. Like right. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. They don't have to cater to me. <laughs> um, and I know that, and that's why I'm not on TV like doing retarded things. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, I think for a, it was too much doom and gloom for a lot of people. I didn't yeah. think they gave him enough ray of hope that this was going to lead to to a big Brian win or mm-hmm. a, a satisfying Brian win or an uplifting Brian win. Um, even if they didn't, I heard rumored that they wanted to do a lengthy Brian Cena program before so they realized Cena was hurt and mm-hmm. maybe they shifted plans and this is what happened. Again, that's speculation. I don't know. Right. I don't work for the WWE, but I think a lot of things were stacked against them. I, I find it hard to believe you can point the, the, um, the finger at the most universally over guy yeah. on the entire roster. Mm-hmm. There is not that's, a single guy on the roster who is universally as over as he is? If they, if that's if that's true, that's bullshit. It's like, yeah, yeah. Because look at the crowd. Look at the crowd every week. I just, yeah, exactly. And as far as product goes, you know, the the SummerSlam card was not as stacked as you know. I'm sure that they would like to have had it. I mean, what was the main? Well, draw? I don't think you count that. That's his win, so you count from SummerSlam going. Okay. Forward. I don't think you can count SummerSlam. Well, I know they said that you know the buy rates were lower than what they were hoping, and so they said, "Oh well, we, they just want the people want to see big guys, so they blame Daniel Bryan for it." So, but big in name or big in stature? Both, uh, stature, like larger men. Um, but you know, you have to look at how the pay per views ended. SummerSlam ended. Daniel Bryan gets the win. The crowd's going nuts. Pyro fanfare, and then it's taken away from him by Randy Orton after with the turn from Triple H. Next pay per view, you know, he gets the victory back. Fan, well, almost fanfare, crowds going nuts. He gets stripped of the title. Next pay per view, no contest due to Big Show knocking them both out. Going to the next pay per view, you know, Orton wins by fishy behavior with the super kick from uh, from Shawn Michaels. So it's like they didn't send the fans home happy. One fucking pay per view. Yeah, in in the in the four pay per views that he was part of. You know, only two had a happy ending for, you know, what the crowd wanted. And then it was just immediately taken away. 
So, you know. I'm fine with, like I said, delayed gratification. If there was a glimmer of hope for a big Brian payoff, Mm -hmm. like I'm fine to stick with it for as long as you're going to like trudge through the shit to get there. Yeah. But a lot of people aren't. No. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, I think a lot of people, what people wanted was for him to win the belt and for this to be like a a new era almost, Mm -hmm. like them like christening him like as the new face of the company. Yep. And I felt like if there was ever a time to make a new face of the company, that, was, that was the time to pull the trigger. He's the most over guy on the roster. You're more or less passing the torch with Cena going out on injury for six months, or he should have at least. Mm-hmm. And uh, you pin him clean. I mean, it's beating Cena one, two, three in the middle of the ring is as big as it gets, folks. That's a passing yeah. the torch moment. And I think they kind of floundered on delivering off of that. Yep. They were afraid to take a chance. So. I guess so. And I'm not a Cena hater by any means. I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I'm quite a Cena fan. Out of the three of us, you're the biggest Cena supporter. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't feel like the cards were big enough for for people to cough up the cash that many times. I mean, I know we did because we're those fans who well, are going to watch it regardless. But how often do they do it where it's like, okay, they have a pay-per-view and they're like, hey, guess what? Three more weeks, we'll have another pay per view. How many times they do that? Year is it once or twice? This time of year, they're pretty yeah. It's together. always it's always the um, you know the around October at the end, you know, end Don't of like September that. to beginning. They like of November. bottleneck into that like three. There's even one. There's like a two week one and mm-hmm. there's a three week one. Yeah, a two so week within, one. Yeah, yeah. Hell in a had, Cell is what like two weeks after summer or wait, what we is had, the order? We had SummerSlam, then Battleground, which is then Hell in a Cell, which which is. There's a two week turnaround between two of them, and then there's a three week turnaround between two of them. From SummerSlam to Battleground, I believe it was three weeks, and then from Battleground to Hell in a Cell was two weeks. I That's just too many fucking pay per views. Yeah, or it could have been vice yeah. versa. So it's just it's too much in too short of a time. Like That's, I'm gonna buy them no matter what, but that doesn't mean that like, however other million people are, just because I am. Yeah, yeah. but that's give or take a hundred, hundred fifty, hundred sixty dollars. In a you know in a six week span, people don't have that kind of cash, you know, and and even if they do, they're not going to spend it just like that, you know. Right. So it's just I don't know, it's just crazy that they do stuff like that. But um, you know, and and like I said, the cards weren't that memorable. Like, are we going out and saying, oh, SummerSlam was the pay per view of the year? Oh, Battleground was pay per view of the year? Oh, Hell in a Cell was pay per view of the year? No, or even Night of Night of Champions. That was that was another one. A pay per view that that happened, so, you know, yeah. Since yeah. SummerSlam, there's been like what four pay per views. There's been SummerSlam, Battleground, yeah. Night of Champions, Hell in a Cell. SummerSlam is in August or July. August. August to October. So in four months, we've had how many pay per views? Like five? four, four or five. Mm-hmm. Well, if you count November, we're gonna have Survivor Series. Yeah, but they're so, not spaced like yeah equally or anything. Right. <clears throat> we had two in October. I mean, I don't think it's. I don't think we're like breaking. Like everyone knows, there are too many pay per views. They try, mm-hmm. they do thirteen a year, and yeah. uh, you know, which is too many. Go down to like ten. Space. Put a little space. I'm fine with. I'm fine with them doing once a month. Um, yeah. If they, you know, keep it. If they do it right. Yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't like. I don't like the spacing between those. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, you know, give it, give us your thoughts on what you think. About, I mean, what's you know. the? There was no besides like, besides Brian and Orton. Your other top feud is a very, very, very lackluster CM Punk Paul Heyman feud. Yeah, it doesn't even involve another active wrestler. It's like, Heyman, whoever Heyman's guy was at the moment, mm-hmm. either Ryback or Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's your number two feud, and you're like saying like, well, yeah. I. I th- there, I mean, I can see people trying to be like, "There's your internet. We gave you your Dana Bryan and your CM Punk, and to an extent, but like it was very lackluster." I mean, and he had Del Rio going up against Rob Van Dam, uh, which I'm not. Uh, yeah. That's you know, I mean, you had a, you had some good. There tag was no team, emphasis on that either. Yeah, you there had some, some good, good tag, tag team, team matches, but other than that, there was like nothing. Like, you had the AJ versus the Total Divas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That floundered, you know, like, what did the, you know, what sold the pay-per-view for you? It was the main event, and that was it. What sold the, 
what I think in theory sells the pay-per-view is people tuning in to be like, this is the time Brian wins it. Yeah. And it never yeah. happens. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he won it, but they took away from every fucking Now time. people mm-hmm. are going to be like, whatever, you know, if later on it happens. Well, like, I mean, there is traditionally there is the you send the fans home happy in the main event like whatever the match like you structure it to send the fans home happy and they didn't or do it give the once. people a reason to tune in the next day on raw yeah but that only works one that only yeah. works like once maybe twice and then you're like that oh was, you can't that was do that for again. SummerSlam. you can't do it again yeah so that was SummerSlam. they should if they if they weren't ready to put the belt on him they should have either held the, the title up longer or i don't know I don't know. I want to like say like maybe they're committed to long term booking, which is a first for them in the past, the recent history, like mm-hmm. the past few years. But I don't see any. But then I hear that they wanted to do C- like Brian Cena long term feud, and I was like, well, were they committed to long term booking or not? I don't. Know. Right. They just don't want to pull the trigger. They're they're unsure, and so they go the safe route. I, that's my guess. I don't know. I don't see. I don't see it. So, anyway, so um. So going back over to Raw, the uh, the next matchup we had uh, Los Matadores and Santino Morella going up against Three MB. I Union feel like Jacks. why huh? do they call them what's, Union, what's Jacks. Union Jacks? What's I think they're baby faces in the UK. Oh yeah, they're they're they love them over there. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I'm totally fine with it. I thought it was cool. Slater's gonna slate. And yeah. McIntyre's gonna McIntyre or whatever it is. Don't, Don't hinder, hinder gender. gender. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was totally fine with this. I thought it was all in good fun, and I liked the match and. uh I like the Slater um, Torito interplay. And, mm-hmm. uh, I thought it was fun. I thought it was cool. I know a lot of people were getting tired of seeing the same, the quote, same matchup over and over again with Los Matadores going up against 3MB. Um, but, you know, I don't really see anything else for them to do right now because uh, you have a face team as the as the tag champs. Uh, you know, they, and they have a lot of steam, is the thing. Yeah. Like, you don't want to cut the legs out from underneath them because they're. Basically, the second hottest act you have right now mm-hmm. is what people love Punk and I, and you can't take it away from him. But he's like he's kind of a stale act right now. He needs to be freshened up a bit. Yeah, uh, they at least need to get him doing something interesting. Get him Brian's your Paul Brian's your hottest act, and I think the Rhodes family is your second hottest act. I mean, like I don't I don't see an argument to be made against that. Yeah. So, but anyways, uh, Los Matadores and Santino, or as I called him, Santoro. Fucking pop so huge for the horns being on the <laughs> on the cover. Yeah, a lo- that was especially me. made. That was especially made. That'd be cool to have that. It killed me when he did the the uh, the Elvis ha- uh, hair on it mm-hmm, and yeah. uh, and the horns. I was like, fuck yeah. That's awesome. I know this sounds stupid, but like if they personally make those, like those are like one thing. I would like to like buy that. <laughs> He'll he'll sell it to a charity or something like yeah, that. Yeah, probably would. Yeah, where like people can the different auction. versions of the Cobra. I would yeah. like to. He'll auction it off. That'd be pretty neat. Kind of like uh, the Mister Sacco with the tie. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, uh, a lot of the heels that are popular over in the UK, they had them going out with the uh, with the flags. Uh, yeah, Fanda- Fandango's over in the UK. Mm-hmm. So are these guys, and uh, they had them play to it. Which I was totally expect fun uh, Fandango to be. Well, they are they, the people who took credit for the Fandango were they really? after WrestleMania. Because yeah, it, oh. it was the people oh, okay. who were in gotcha. attendance after WrestleMania. And, and also, a.k.a. Around. the worst crowd ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I know we have a lot of UK listeners, but that crowd fucking ate my lunch. I was like, fuck these guys. Do we really want to go to the Raw after WrestleMania? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in fights with everyone. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> fuck you, buddy. <laughs> Shut the fuck up and pay attention to this man. Fucking fingers off. <laughs> well, Los Matadores and Santino end up getting the victory. Just a fun match to entertain the crowd. Next up, we got to see uh, Damian Sandow going up against Kofi Kingston. And you're seeing sort of a revitalized Damian Sandow, you know, take him more seriously. He's gotten more aggressive. Uh, you know, it was kind of a short match, which is fine because, uh, you know, dom- uh, you know, Sandow needed to, to show some dominance. Um, I mean, I wonder what they're going to eventually do. I know that he's showing aggression and all that stuff mm-hmm. and dominance, but like, I guess he's trying to prove, like, you know what? I know I lost the scene, but guess what? I can do. And blah, yeah, blah. I feel that's exactly what they're doing. They're going to try and, you know, have him build up that Help aggression. Help him build up so he can go against Cena. Yeah. So he'll he'll try and uh, be seen as next challenge or something like that. He's he's eventually trying to build his way well, hopefully, up. Hopefully, good luck. So <laughs> Cena, Cena's going to, you know, I'm calling it now. Cena's going to beat Del Rio. If you think Del Rio is going to win a Survivor Series, then there has to be some sort of foul play, and I don't see that happening. But um, 
but Sandow is working his way back up to there because they had a really good match on Raw, you know, whenever he cashed in. So for him to, you know, sort of be in the waiting for, for John Cena saying, all right, man, you, you've you coasted through with he, your title reign. He had time that time to... period with the, the briefcase where he's losing. Mm-hmm. Then that stuff with Cena, he lost now, and he's going to be winning, I guess, yeah. his matches. Again. Yeah, so he'll win leading up to his eventual chance at, you know, defeating Cena for the title, which, mm-hmm. you know, if they do that, great. If not, then he can say, okay, I'm going to focus even harder and come back stronger than ever, and, you know, I'll take you out for good, you know, the next time. You're welcome. Um, well, what are your thoughts, Doug? Uh, yeah, I'm not high on Sando. Uh, I think that's a babyface story to tell. Like mm-hmm. the, oh, I got mine, but then I worked my way back up from the bottom. That's kind of a babyface story. What so about, I'm not sure that it What about the evil them. waiting in the darkness, growing strength stronger? Yeah, but <laughs> I don't know. Is that what they're selling me? I don't get that vibe. I don't know. To be honest, what I just said to Tyler, you know, that's something I could see happening, but I don't, I don't really know where they're going to be going. I don't know that that's a feud I want to see. Sandow and Cena? I don't know that that's something I want to see. Their match was, they had a hot little match, but I don't know that them as a, like, as a, as a married couple, like, makes sense. I don't want to see, mm-hmm. like, six months of that. You know, I don't know right. that. I don't think. I mean, that, it, could, it could be a good short feud after Sandow, or not at Sandow after Del Rio yeah, to but lead into. If you're gonna like do the legwork of like building up the guy, for like saying he got his, and now he start from the bottom, he's gonna work his way. Like, then wh- why like take the time to like build a guy that way to have a short feud? Hmm. I don't know. Like you groom, I think you groom a guy, or like you you groom a guy, or you don't. Like I don't, I don't. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I kind of mm. lost my train of thought, but I don't know. Okay. I mean, I, there's shit I'd prefer to see over that. Right. I think he's just, for a while, he's just going to be beating up on dudes. Yeah. On the mid card. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, so Sandow ends up getting the victory over Kingston. That takes us into the... Uh, I mean, but think about it. Is that promos, you want to hear Cena Sandow promos? Like, the, I think character-wise, they don't click. Like, I don't know that I want... Even three months of Cena and Sandow promos against each other. I don't think I would want to see it, but I don't. I don't know what else. Because you know, to do. to have a great feud, Cena has to be carried. You know, I think like, that's bullshit. Well, I, he can, I think he can have good good promos. Sandow's going to carry Cena. Bull no, fucking that's, shit. That's, that's what Cena's, I was getting to. Cena's the superior wrestler in every aspect. That's what I was getting to. I was going to say Cena. You know, sometimes <laughs> needs to be carried to have that great feud. I don't think Sandow can do that. He's be, because you know, because you know how, you know, you know the work that he did with uh, crap. Now I'm blanking out, but the you know the work they did with uh with CM Punk for the Money in the Bank. You know that the build up for that was that wasn't Punk carrying him though. He was he was every every much as vital and uh, brought as much to that match as CM Punk did. Mm-hmm. And Cena's carried fuckers. Like, Cena's carried dudes in matches. Like, I don't know. I I know that I've seen. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. That's, it's, 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 it's like low-hanging fruit to pick on Kali. I'm not going to pick on Kali. I was just saying, because he's actually picked them up and carried them. Well, yeah, but I mean, (laughs) I don't know. I think I've probably, in fact, I'm sure that I have said something really stupid like, oh, Cena can be carried, but. That was probably me being like a stupid little fuck about it. Like trying to like that's in retrospect, that sounds so fucking smarmy and smarky, like some like stupid internet fan. Like <laughs> I'm, if I have ever said that, I'm ashamed of ever said that. Like Cena is a good fucking Losen? fan. Huh? I said Losen. What do you mean? He's our stat guy. I'm sure. Oh he'll, yeah. Well, he'll, I've, he'll listen, find I'm, the clip. I'm sure I have. No, I, fl- <laughs> I freely, I, I'm saying right now, if I said it, I'm a dumbass. Like that's me being stupid. Like, I always shoot from, like, I'm shooting from the, the hip, and I talk from the heart. Like, I, I don't need to, like, bullshit you. <laughs> like, my opinion changes all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I'm man enough to admit it. Like, if I said that, that's me being a fucking moron. Like, I'm stupid if I've ever said that. I don't, I don't, I think Cena brings a lot to matches. It's stupid to say otherwise. Like, 
I, I don't know. I, I don't need. I don't. I don't know if I want to go like full scenery right now. Okay. It's been done a lot of times. Yeah. It's all right. Don't worry. Don't don't beat don't yourself know. up. But I, I'm not I, beating myself up. I'm being. <laughs> I agree with you though. I think that you know uh, those matches aren't as hot if it's someone besides Cena. But what I mean is like uh, there's a lot of times that he other people don't carry him. I feel like you know he can pull his own weight or or help carry you know someone else though. For goddamn sure. For goddamn sure. <laughs> Cena is one of the best all times as like a leading guy. Yeah. And that's match quality wise too. If you check Cena's high points, Cena's had match of the year like. Every fucking year. And part of that is because he's in the reason he's like in a position to have match of the year partially, but he's also always in it, which means he brings something as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he doesn't have match of the year with this one guy who can carry him. He has a match of the year with a variety of opponents. Yeah. Your Brock Lesnar your CM Punk's and those all, those guys are good workers too. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not to your point. He's not, he's not pulling Kali, but like no one's pulling Kali, you know, yeah. minus maybe a Daniel Bryan. <laughs> you know, no one's pulling Kali's ass. Right. And I just did the thing I said I wasn't going to do by making fun of like <laughs> taking the easy, ta- easy target and making fun of Kali. But like, yeah. y'all see that, uh, that one picture of Kali, of Kali's head on the, um, most interesting man in the world. Uh-uh. You know, that uh-uh. meme that's, I don't always, but when I do, I'm, I'm a guy who hates on memes. Oh, like, God. I'm a fucking player hater when they it comes did... to the memes. I'm like, that's not funny. Why is this on my fucking feet? <laughs> they did one with Kali that says, I don't always speak English, but when I do, it's just so taking a shot. Uh, you're smiling. You're smiling. It's okay. That's my sympathy smile. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't right. want to hurt your feelings, Daniel. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. So, you made that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I did not. No. Honestly, I did not. like Daniel secretly made that. No, I not, like I roll my eyes so fucking hard at ninety percent of memes, it's a fucking wonder they aren't stuck cross-eyed in my head. Like I don't know. I find like next to none of them funny. And most of them are like really stupid things. You're like, oh, you're a fucking idiot. Only an idiot would say that. Like ninety percent of them. I'm sorry for meme makers. Well, oh, you there. like the? I probably fucking hate you. Slater's gonna slate meme, huh? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> like I'm a, I'm indifferent to it now. I'm like I don't care. I was gonna make one, but I didn't post it, and it involved you actually. No, uh, you shouldn't. <laughs> I don't want to see my. I don't want to have to hate on my own self. <laughs> it was pretty funny though. At least I think so. It's probably I'd probably what, hate it. What was it? I it probably was, hate it twice as hard. It was the picture that we all took with Robbie E, and it was uh, and it said Uh-oh. meets TNA superstar. Doug is not impressed. See, that'd be a lie though. I was fine to meet him. <laughs> I was happy. I, I'm a guy who will meet anybody. Like, I'm. It wouldn't matter to me. Okay. I would take a picture. I'd get an 8 by 10 in a picture with anybody, pretty much. Even guys I don't even care. Yeah. Batista, sign me up. I'll take a picture with Dave Batista. Not a fan of his work. Bronze body? Well, I like his acting career now. Yeah. I think his. <laughs> I'm, Guardians I, of the Galaxy. Come I on. like his fucking uh, acting career more than his uh, wrestling career, to be honest. But uh, Did you guys see Riddick with him in it? No. I didn't either. So, I have to see how he does. And compared to Bronze Body, that was it, right? Bronze Body. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. So oh, it's bra- a, it a brass. Brass Body. body. Cause brass. I know Bronze Body is like the tanning brass. salon. It's brass Body. Thank you. So, <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, next matchup: Curtis Axel going up against Dolph Ziggler to retain the Intercontinental Championship. I thought it was. A, I thought it was an okay TV match. I'm glad that Axel got the win. But... I didn't read the spoilers. Okay. <laughs> so I was hoping that Ziggler would win. <laughs> I didn't read the spoilers. I was just watching as I go. But, uh, Doug, you kind of chuckled to yourself. Oh, no. I was just thinking, like, you were talking about all those, like, those gains that the main side has been making and how we've been catching some of that runoff from all those gains that they've been making. I'm just oh, like, yeah. I was like, oh, like, I can just see, like, our numbers dropping as I, like, <laughs> rant for Cena and, and call people who don't like Cena stupid. And, like, I can see the numbers dropping, and I'm like, I don't care. Because even if you go and look at, like, our... As long our, as we have 22, then we're <laughs> Yeah, okay. as long as it doesn't drop below 22. <laughs> but uh, you can see even, like, the fucking... When I just made this stupid off-the-cuffs, like, half-assed, like, oh, is it really lack of selling if he can really fucking do it? That's, like, our lowest listen to show. People, like, saw Cena and like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> so don't ever put Cena's picture on the thing anymore. Okay. So, like, make them listen to it, and then I call them stupid for, like, not liking Cena. <laughs> <laughs> then they can be like really fucking ins- they don't they don't have to like they roll their eyes whenever they see like a pro scene thing on our page like I roll at all their stupid fucking memes and then like wait like make them listen and I'll insult them like through their earbuds <laughs> fuck you 
when this comes out the next day, hey, we have like uh, we have a few likes, uh, dislikes or unlike this, whatever. Yeah. Oh, I well. don't care. I think oh, it's. Well. I, mean, I know. I think it's pretty moronic. I think the, I think the way the the way the irrational hate for Cena is pretty pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm laughing at you for your irrational hate of Cena. I'm rolling my eyes at you. For your irrational hate. A lot of a lot of people <laughs> hate Cena for no fucking reason at all. Well, they they say stupid things like like I'll see people like rant against like who's someone that everyone loves. Like, give me an internet fan that's not Daniel Bryan or Cena, but not a guy who's proved himself, but someone who a, an internet favorite that people love. Give me an example. Well, they they did like Dolph for a while. Dolph Ziggler, yeah. Zack Ryder in the Zach, past. Zack Ryder. Antonio no. Cesaro. Yeah. Pete Slater. C- Cesaro is that fucking good though. Cesaro is not a good. Comparison because Cesaro is that good. Sheamus? No, I don't know. No, I like Sheamus too. I'm talking about your your Zach. I'm talking about your your Zach Ryder. Internet or, darlings. Cody yeah. Rhodes. Oh, yeah. I mean, like Cody Rhodes, Zach Ryder, John Cena is infinitely better in every every possible way than those guys. Like he's a better promo. He's a better worker. He's got more charisma. He's more of a draw. I mean, he's better in every conceivable like way. This, he's but, dating like, Nikki Bella. <laughs> but like the thing about it is people like. People, stupid people, confuse objective bad with subjective bad. There is no, like, John Cena can literally not be objectively bad in main event and be the face of the number one wrestling company on the world. You can subjectively think he's bad. Like, that's not my style. I don't like the gimmick. I don't like the, he's over pushed. I will listen to a lot of, like, negative Cena. There, there are, there are remarks you can make about Cena that are true and that I will listen to and that I will say, that's your opinion, I can respect that. But there are irrational hates where, like, he's not objectively bad. These people think that, like, you can just put fucking Zack Ryder in the main event and he's going to be, like, as good as fucking, like, Zack Ryder was robbed. Like, no, John Cena is better in every conceivable way than Zack Ryder is. Like, you can't just put Zack Ryder in the main event and be like, Zack Ryder is going to carry the fucking... No, it's not... Just be... Yeah, Zack Ryder... Good on you for getting yourself over, but it didn't get you anywhere, and that sucks. I feel sorry for you, but that doesn't make you like. There's a like they, Zach Ryder. It would have been fucking awesome if they would have just put the boat on Zach Ryder and blah, blah blah. It's like no, dumbass. That's not how it fucking works. <laughs> like people confuse what sh- subjectively bad and objectively bad. They think that some schmuck that they fucking like see at some indie that can do that does like cool flips and cool bumps, and they're like, oh, that guy's better than John Cena. No, dumbass. If that guy was better than John Cena, he would be in fucking John Cena's spot. Like, John Cena is objectively good. Objectively. Now, he may subjectively not be your taste. You could be like, I don't like the way he works, but not. you can't just put anybody in John Cena's spot and they will succeed or carry the company the way that he has. There's a difference between he's not my taste and he is bad. Because something is not your taste does not make it bad. Because they... D- they don't realize a lot like, of top 40 radio is not my taste, but I can yeah. say objectively it was well crafted. Mm-hmm. Like it takes someone with talent to put that together. And I don't like it because <laughs> subjectively, I don't like it because it's not my thing, but I don't say that's fucking stupid. Well, I mean, I did, <laughs> but like, like this is like the wisdom of like, a, of I finally turned 30 years old. Like I, I don't even want to take it. <laughs> Like, I don't want to take it away from, like, preteens and teens and even dudes in their early 20s. Like, I don't want to take it away from you guys. Like, you establish yourself by saying, that's not what I am. Like, that you're like, I don't like that. That's not what I am. I understand that. And I don't know. It's like almost a rite of passage. And I don't want to take, I know we skew kind of young. We have young listeners. I don't want to offend you guys. But one day you're going to be turned 30 and you're going to be like, oh, I was such a douchebag. Like, <laughs> you... <laughs> Like, to objectively hate, like, you don't define yourself by what you don't like. Mm. Like, that's, and I know it's important, everyone does it, and it's like I said, it's a rite of passage. We all did it, but when you get older, you're like, oh, I was stupid for doing that. Like, and me too, me, myself included. Can't believe I like that. Right. No, 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 I can't believe that I acted like that. Yeah. Like, it's not, you like what you like, that's fine. Yeah. But you don't, you don't define yourself by what you don't like. Because it's stupid. Because once you like, you have more like real world experience, and you're like, oh, it's just not for me. I get it. It's subjectively not my taste. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make it objectively bad. It's it's a stupid thing to say. Then- I don't know. And 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 that's cool. Like I get it. It's a big part of being a teenager or a preteen or maybe even an early twenty. I'll say like if you can, even if you're if you can legally, I don't know how it is in the world, but. 
like other states and wherever else in the world, but like here it's like 21. So I'll give you like 20. You can legally buy alcohol. You got a couple of years to like define yourself by what you don't like, but like eventually you have to grow up and say, Oh, that's just not for me and mm. move on and carry on with like what you do like. And then like focus yeah. on what you like and not like hate on everybody else. Shit. You know, like mm-hmm. it's just not for you. Like not every part of the show is for you and it doesn't make it bad because it's not for you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So 23 year olds. Doug's dropping like life knowledge on you right now. <laughs> I you give you some, 21. I give you a couple of years that. after 23. I can see. Yeah. You can still define yourself by, by what you don't like with 23. Let's say for sure. Like if you're 25, it's time to like, like learn the way the world works and stop defining and use, yourself by what you don't like and use proper grammar. <laughs> oh, I don't do that. I can't talk. I don't even know what I said for the best five minutes. I'm just like, <laughs> welcome, welcome back, <laughs> welcome back. He has it blacked out. He's already getting, he's already getting like Alzheimer's. It. He can't remember a thing. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, <laughs> if you're like 25 and you're doing it, I'm like laughing at you. I'm rolling my eyes at you because you're old enough to know better. Shame on you. <laughs> there's nice. a there's this really great quote from this really great song by this really great band, and the quote is, "The shit that you hate don't make you special," and that's. It is definitely applied to much heavier things than what we're talking about right now. Like, real heavy life shit is, like, this is what it's talking about. It's not talking about John Cena, but it can be applied to John Cena, <laughs> and you should apply it to this John Cena. This is above Cena. John Cena. Yeah. The shit that this you hate... This is more about just wrestling, all right? Let's, it is. Let's be honest here. The shit that you hate don't make you special. Nobody cares. We're all in trouble. So go fucking grow up, guys. Like, well, no, don't grow up. I mean, like, roll with it. I know that's what you guys do. I did it. Everyone does it. Like but, what you like. But you'll but you'll grow up one day and you'll be like, oh, it just wasn't for me. And I was just like doing like the thing that everyone does. And yeah. it's kind of lame and whatever. It's like for Tyler and myself, drinking's not our thing. People try and get us a drink. And we're like, eh, not tonight. I might have one. <coughs> okay. Yeah. But other than that, it's like, nah, I'm good. So... And you don't hate on someone for yeah. wanting to drink and all My that. big point is, like, there's a difference between subjective and objective bad. And not... John Cena is not objectively bad. There's a lot point. of people just to say it's bad for, like, the stupidest reasons. And, like, yeah. instead of, like, hey, like you said, it's not for me. Or he's... I mean, he's in that position. He's there for a reason. But his wrestling and all stuff is not for me. I don't yeah. like it that much. This, let's define this so people know when they should have outgrown this phase by now. I say 25, you have to have outgrown this phase. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I say if you're 25 or older and you rationally hate John Cena, you can you can articulate proper reasons why you dislike him, but you mm-hmm. cannot irrationally hate and make stupid memes about him if you're 25 or older. Because if you're 25, if you're tw- no, you can you can make like real criticisms any art you can criticize yeah you just have to have an actual criticism and not confuse objectivity and subjectivity there's a difference but if you're 25 and you rationally hate cena you should maybe go like touch a boob or a penis or something <laughs> can, with, with, and, can, with and some can, places you can touch both at the same time with can, whatever you know whatever you're whatever you're into touching go do that and stop irrationally hating john cena yeah like you just like you touch you're like hey you know what Touch whatever you touch, as long as there's consent, and uh, <laughs> yes. stop stop irrationally you hating. Know what? I don't hate him that much. I just he's just not for me, or I like him. You know, one of those. Yeah, it's one of those. You know, I respect what he does. You know, because it it takes a lot of work to get to the top. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just I I don't like the style of his of his of like how I, his matches go. Like I don't like Randy Orton like a lot. Like I. I I yeah. have a lot of criticism, but I'm not stupid enough to think any douchebag can plug into Randy Orton's spot. Like, I'm not, like, that stupid. Like, right. I would never say that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, there you go. So, um, back over to Raw. Where Kurt- are we? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> we're you, we're black, at, you blacked out. We're at, <laughs> just the mentioning. Sometimes I talk and I, like, I don't even know what just I Just the talk. mentioning of the names threw him off on a tangent. I've noticed that before whenever you would, you'd talk about stuff for a while. I was like, I don't even know what I just said. Yeah. <laughs> But like, where are we? I feel like I've been talking for 30 minutes and I don't know one thing I've said <laughs> except for go touch a boob or a penis. <laughs> Objectivity and subjectivity. Go so, touch uh, a boob or a penis and then let us know on our page. That's, yeah. Let us know how that went for you. And, uh, you know. So, uh, I get a drink. 
Can y'all hold it down for a minute? Sure. So, uh, you know, we'll skip past this. We'll go from there. This. Boob and penis. Yeah, pen- eight penis boobs. So, uh, eight penis boobs was awesome. <laughs> so, that so Curtis Axel going up against Dolph Ziggler. Curtis Axel ends up getting the victory to retain the Intercontinental you see Dolph had pink in his hair? Yeah, that was, well, he had that the previous week oh. uh, to celebrate the breast cancer awareness. So, uh like, but, uh, like I said, I didn't read the spoilers mm-hmm. and all that stuff, so I was like, oh, yeah, 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 let Dolph get the title. I was thinking that as well until he got until Axel got the victory, and I'm like, he needed that a lot more than Ziggler needed the title. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> what, what what has he done lately? Ziggler? No, Axel. Axel hasn't done anything. He's not doing anything. Well, if you think about it, too... Ziggler is nothing, really nothing going on for Ziggler. Also, yeah. so, so although he's over enough with the he's crowd, he's over enough. He doesn't yeah. need the belt. Axel needs something, and you know it's good that he got the win because it strengthens because, his, his title well, run a little bit. To me, it feels like it, it's not strengthening mm-hmm. him. That's I don't know why. It's just I feel like he's in the same spot. Yeah, as he is like with that title makes him it's elevated him more. It puts him in the spotlight a little bit yes. more. But when he's gone, then what? You know, yeah. when then what? It's like. I hope best for the well. That's why that kid. He's he's most likely older than me. Well, uh, that's why. Did I, I just that... lose all our listeners under twenty five? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. We're down uh, to twenty one. Two hundred uh, uh, unlikes. So, but you know that's that's exactly my point. You know that's why he needed that win. He needed to stay in the spotlight, so to speak. So. But what what can like help him or like i mean i know he's charisma like, yeah that too but is there like someone that can help him work on it or to help him give him a rub or well they try that with Heyman, but yeah i don't know and uh don't look for that to last too much longer yeah because no. uh yeah i don't want to spoil too much but i did ring, read the smackdown spoilers if oh you i know, didn't if you want to know what i'm talking about go to wrestlingnewsource.com check out the spoilers for this week's smackdown Uh-oh. so uh so there you go uh, that's all I'm going to say. Curtis Axel ends up defeating uh, Dolph Ziggler to retain the Intercontinental Championship. Anything from you, Doug? No, I want to backtrack for a second. Okay, <laughs> I want to say I'm not. I don't. I don't hate all you like young listeners. I'm just saying like I wouldn't even take it away from you. It's almost like a rite of passage to define yourself by things you're not, or to mm-hmm. define yourself by things you don't like. So don't think I'm just taking a big shit on you. I'm just saying one day you're going to wake up at 30 and be like, oh. Yeah, that's just not for me, and I don't care. You're not going to irrationally hate me. Yeah, like one day you'll be like 20, and then you wake up and you're 30. Not really. It was stuff. Time will go by fast. It because does it seems like I that. was, I'm 25. <laughs> so uh, I felt like I was 20 the other day. Yeah. I remember not too long ago, I was celebrating my 21st birthday. And that's crazy because I'm, next year I'm going to be turning 28. Almost 30. Getting old fast. I don't like it. So uh, next up, we got to see... Uh, 28. Yeah. I don't feel so bad. Yeah. I thought you were both 25. And I was like, oh, man. No. Nope. Nope. It's just this guy. I'm the youngest. He's the youngin. I'm the youngest. Youngin. <laughs> yes, I am. ready for hibernation. Hibernation, yeah. cold. Hey, bear. Hey. So... Uh, I love the cold. Next up, we got to see Tamina going up against Nikki. Nothing really special. <laughs> Tamina ended up getting the victory. Anything to take away from it? I'm still blacked out. Halfway. Okay. <laughs> I, don't <So. laughs> I don't know what's going on. So, well, backstage, Randy Orton was asking the Shield where they were while he was getting his ass handed to him, and you know, I I really like this this scene because you know Ambrose is trying to get control of you know Randy, trying to get him to calm down, and Orton's just going off on a tangent. You know, I was getting my ass handed to me, and you guys weren't there. No one was there to help me. Where the hell were you guys? And what, Dean? You know, I just really, I really like that just one little click that he did where he was like, yes, what is it, Dean? How can I help you since you didn't help me? You know, just, just that little bit of attitude that he gave him. I really liked it, which is a lot coming from a Randy Orton segment. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, the shield basically saying, Hey, we don't work for Kane. We don't work for Maddox. We don't, we certainly don't work for you. So, uh, we work for Triple H. We do what we want. Believe in that. So, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, next up we got to see t- uh, Fandango, much to the delight of the crowd who were Fandangoing, uh, going up against a, a Tyson kid, returning Tyson kid. Was it good? Was the match good? My mom called and I had to talk to her. Uh, it was short. I would like to see, I would have liked to have seen the match go a little bit longer, uh, but it didn't last very long. Yeah, I blinked and it was over. No, actually, um, I watched a little bit and I, t- I turned around and went in the kitchen to get a drink <laughs> and then it was, go- it was over. So Yeah. 
Uh, it was a short match. Fandango got the win, and the and the crowd went very happy. So, uh, you know, they did their little dancing. So I think the fans won that match. They did. They won. They wanted Fandango to win. So, uh, but I'd like to see a little bit more out uh, more out of them. Uh, next up, we got to see John Cena going up against the Real Americans. So this was a handicap match where the heels had the numbers game. So, uh, you know, I miss I miss him doing all the tank mannerisms. Now he like wants to do like the like I'm gonna run. Mm-hmm. Kind of miss the tank shit. Bring back the tank. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, and it it was funny to me because like their music or Cena's music hit, he gets booed out. You know, practically booed out of the building. The Real Americans music hits, they get cheered. Zeb cuts a promo on them. They boo Zeb. And then he says, now put your hands over your heart and say, we the people. And they all did it. Well, I thought they booed him like. They, he booed They booed him like. When, um... Okay, no, this is what I was like. This is what I, this is what clicked with me. I was going to say because they popped huge for like the, uh, for the Union Jack like gear. Mm-hmm. They loved that Fandango had like the, the tights with the flag. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I was like, I don't feel so bad that there's. That stupid blonde patriotism in the U.S., like the whole like stupid USA right. shit, because it's everywhere. Everyone has dumb blind patriotism. So I was like, I felt okay about being an American. There. America. Yeah. Okay. So um, you know how you roll your eyes when you get the, that dumb blind like uh, USA shit and stuff like that. And yeah. You're like people pop for the America shit, and you're <laughs> like, oh god, these fuckers. And then <laughs> uh, the fuck up. But it's everywhere, so I felt yeah. like less stupid about it being an American who where, where there's like that funny patriotism shit. Okay. I don't know. Cool. Deal. Not that they're, not that they're not that all patriotism is phony, but that feels like super phony when it's right. for the like USA chance and, and all yeah. that. But um, every, but it happens everywhere apparently, so that's oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, so Zeb cuts a promo on the UK fans and they boo him, but then they chant "We the People" with him, which was kind of weird. Um, fans are wishy washy. Yes, they are. Uh, we were in Bizarro World, as Lawler likes to call it, but um. You know, the matchup I felt was pretty good. Um, Cena ends up getting the victory. Uh, Del Rio caused sort of a distraction, set ringside. And after the match, he attacked John Cena, and, and Cena was saved by Big E Langston. But what do you guys think about the matchup? I think they're about to strap the f- fucking rocket to Big E's back. It looks like yeah. they want to, like, they're like, hey, kid, we'll see what you got. I mean, mm-hmm. he made the save for Punk, and he yeah. made the save for Cena. Cena's going to help mm-hmm. you out. Well, yeah, man. Well, I think he, he's supposedly uh, seen as a big fan of his, or you know, like that's that's his boy. I see a lot of potential in Big E. I, yeah. I expect big things from him. He's a big fucking shit brick house motherfucker, and uh, he's athletic as fuck, and he's mm-hmm. like super. Uh, I mean, he's, I mean, he moves really well for a dude that big, and he is yeah. built like a yeah. fucking brick wall, and that's that's fucking cool, mm-hmm. man. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Humongous man. Or his legs, man. He's his legs, arms. I like the fact that they teased the Cesaro swing on Cena. You know, like they pop the, for it. He oh, did the, yeah. he did the so, mm-hmm. so what's <laughs> gonna happen that they're gonna save that for another time, you think, or whatever? Oh, it's I possible. mean they still hit the I'm popular air than the European uppercut. Yeah. Always hit and the crowd Cena. went nuts for that too. And which I'll be honest with you, I still I mean I've seen it uh, a few times mm-hmm. on Cena and I still like it, so yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, really on really anybody nice. to be honest with you. Ah, can we get that fucking matchup or what? <laughs> Break up the fucking real Americans. That's the the title picture I want to see. So after after Del Rio Cena, Cesaro Cena. Fuck it, yeah, fuck yeah. vacate whatever you got going on right now. <laughs> Let's get to that. The only match I want to see more than Cena Cesaro is Brian and Lesnar. Lesnar. I agree with you. I would like to see Lesnar versus the Undertaker. <laughs> fuck you! Fuck you! Row. I didn't. Yeah. Bu- I didn't bite that time though. I didn't bite that time. I knew it was coming. I was like, he didn't fuck bite, you. Didn't bite as much as the first time. Yeah, no, I didn't bite it all. I was like, oh, I was rolling my fucking eyes. You motherfuckers! Yeah. You hear my fucking eyes rolling from here? I can. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, yeah. So Cena ends up getting the victory. Del Rio attacks. Big E makes the save. So that puts in puts them into a match later on in the night. Uh, next up, we got to see Ryback going up against R-Truth. R-Truth kind of mixing up the lyrics a little bit. It was uh, fucking awesome. Yeah, he was yeah. targeting Ryback on that one. Can I uh, say one thing? I one li- thing. I like R-Truth's like, entrance a lot. It always gets me hyped up. But JBL fucking is ruining it when he What's like... What's up? 
He does it. He does it off beat. He does it off beat and it's stupid. JBL, shut the fuck up when our shit is coming out. He's Mexico's greatest export. What's okay. up? Shut up, JB. <laughs> Someone mute JB <laughs> during that part. It's like he'll say something and Someone will try and correct, you know, they'll say, well, that's just your opinion. Well, yeah, that's my opinion. No, it's it's Lawler's opinion. What do you think? And then if Cole will say something, he's like, well, your opinion, that's that's a stupid opinion. Just, I mean, man. I get that he's working hill. I just don't want him, like, talking over Archer's intro. What's up? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and he did. He did the awesome. He, like, almost, I'm not going to say it. It's a freestyle. I don't think he went off the fucking dome with it. But... He at least like had a, a specific rap prepared for them, and mm-hmm. I thought it was cool. And I was like, "Cool, JBL's fucking shouting all over like a dog." What's up? <laughs> Offbeat, dumbass. <laughs> What's up? What? Okay. <laughs> so, anyways, our truth versus Ryback. Um, you would think this was kind of something to help Ryback kind of get the ball rolling for him. Nope, not at all. Our truth ends up getting the win. Uh, it was quite surprising, actually. Yeah. I don't know what's gonna go happen with Ryback. He seemed pretty shocked at at you know at the loss. Anything to take away from it? Aside from the, uh, from I, don't, the I don't know how to read. I don't know how to read the Ryback situation. I don't does know. it does it make you want to say something? Like what's up? No, it doesn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> nope. All right, so uh, I'm yeah. wondering what's up with it, but <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Our truth ends up getting the victory, which takes us into the match- next matchup: Alberto Man, Del Rio. Huh? I'm fucking hungry. I want some tacos. I was gonna stop at Taco Bell in the minute here, and I was like, I didn't. I fucking regret it right now. Do you need to go get some tacos? No, I'm going to as soon as I leave. Oh, okay, so we'll have to rush through these next. Rush uh, through. I'm fucking. All right, so Alberto Del Rio defeats tacos. defeats Biggie Langston. I'm gonna get like one of those fucking twelve packs or whatever. Really? Yeah. Wow. You handle that, that hungry by yourself. You know, that I'm just gonna fucking cram it in, dude. And I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna like, if I have to throw up a little bit, then I will. Unless you eat going. some, just save some for tomorrow. <laughs> nah, fuck that. Ta- I'm <laughs> Taco all, Bell I'm fridge all tacos. Uh, I'm an all or nothing kind of guy. What uh, fish tacos? No, it's a fridge, like refrigerator. Uh, yeah, that's uh, not gonna. Uh, they well salt. They're there. soggy. Yeah. yeah, dude, the one at three sixty five is fucking up. They just rebuilt that motherfucker, and every time I get soft tacos, they're always fucking like so greasy that they're soggy. Uh. The fucking thing. I will go all the way to Twin City because it's fucking fresher, like, every time. So well, freshness of clean, clean. You need to take their online survey. I do need to take their online survey. Yeah. I, um, I'm, I eat ta- I'm a guy who eats Taco Bell, like, six days a week. Like, I want fresh tacos. <laughs> <laughs> you want good food, damn it. God. Before you have to just explode all over the bathroom. So, uh, <laughs> anyways. My, my colon's just used to it now. Yeah. It's like, fucking. <laughs> now it's like, yeah, whatever. Uh, so, <laughs> Del Rio ends up getting the victory over Big E Langston, which, you know, you, you kind of have to expect it because you want Del Rio to remain strong going into his championship match. But it's also, it, w- it would have been a good chance to help build Big E as a potential threat. Um, I don't mind him. I don't mind him doing the job here. I'd yeah. hate to see him tap. Like, yeah. you don't want to see like a big, powerful baby face tap. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Especially like if, you, if you're going to give him tapping away, you don't give it away for free. Like, make it a big moment. And especially since the match was so short, it was a yeah. short match. So I, mean, I don't know. Maybe there's like a change in mindset when it comes to submissions, but I am still a believer of a baby face. You, you try not to make them tap, especially when you're building the guy. Like, make mm-hmm. that a moment, you know? Yeah. So, anyways, next up, we got to see a uh, promo from Paul Heyman, of all people. Um, basically casting right back out, saying, oh, you know, I tried to offer my services to him, and he refused, so uh, get that big, dumb... Guy, this guy is, out of here. This is crazy. Now, like, where does he go from now? Is he he's just going to keep on losing until are they, like, going to, like, take him off TV for a while? Or I have no idea. No idea what they're doing for Ryback. But, uh, but Paul Heyman basically says vengeance will still be his for the attack that CM Punk laid on him. and that he Brock will... Lesnar is going to eventually come back. They're going to be Brock versus CM Punk, too. Yeah, possibly. Um, and uh, that brought out CM Punk, who took care of Curtis Axel and... Brought out a kendo stick and started wailing on, wailing on him all over again, much to the delight of the crowd. So, um, yeah, um, I don't know. Interesting. Well, I guess we'll have to just wait and see when Brock Lesnar makes his return, inevitable return for that. Um, but that takes us into the uh, main event of the evening. Probably the most, the biggest reason to talk about Raw 
Daniel Bryan and CM Punk going up against the Shield in a handicap match. Um, you know, this matchup ended up in a no contest, but it was a very exciting matchup. The crowd was super hot for it. Um, it ended with a no contest after uh, after the Wyatts inter intervened. The lights went out, and all of a sudden, Eric Rowan and Luke Harper were in the ring. And you know, I love the fact that they did the Shield Wyatt stare down. Like I know for. You know, for the longest time since the Wyatt family came into the WWE, a lot of people have been saying, Shield versus Wyatt, Shield versus Wyatt. And I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense. You having two heel factions go against each other. It, that's stupid. That's pointless. Don't do it. Then I saw it. The way that they presented it, where they were both trying to take care of someone, and Shield was like, they dude. Each other, yeah. yeah, they're like, dude, what are you doing getting in my business? Back off. You're like, we're not backing down. You back down. No, you back down. You know, I... I love that. I love the stare down that they had between one another. I, um, you know, I thought it was all right, like just this little tease, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think they shouldn't do that for like a long, long, long yeah. time. You know, because just the the Wyatts are just getting going right now, and yeah. like I mean, Shield's been there for a little while, longer, close to but, a year now. Yeah, but I mean, that was that was neat, but they shouldn't pull the trigger on that anytime soon. Okay, in my opinion. How about you, Doug? Uh, I agree with Abear uh, wholeheartedly. Um, it was cool to see a tease, uh, <laughs> but they need to keep them away from each other for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, they're both. I don't think either. I don't think either s s stable works as a babyface stable. Right. And uh, I don't see the point in heel heel. I, I don't know that uh, just them crossing paths, trying to get to someone else is something that can sustain a feud between the two of them. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to flip a team, baby face, and I. I don't see that. I don't see that as any either of the teams working as a baby face team, and right, um, and and more so that I I don't think that, um. I don't see it as a few that's just like that can, where they can make each other. I see it as mm -hmm. like there's a I team. Think, yeah, I think there's a team that that gets elevated out of it, and one and, separate, and one and one doesn't, and I, I'm not sure that. That either team has reached their potential as a team to where you right. want to risk that yet. Yeah. So I think it's a it's a cool tease, but I think I'd prefer to see it like much further down the line. Yeah, and I know that there is talks going on right now about you know what what Aber said about breaking uh, breaking a team up, that being the Shield. Um, you know, and and that could be a way for them to to possibly cause them to break up uh, as they you know have a three on three match to. To determine who who stays and who has to, you know, separate or something. I don't like that, that as a stipulation because that feels like a personal call. Like we decide if we're going to team or not. Like we, yeah, that feels like a weird thing for like a a stipulation to decide in my mm -hmm. opinion. So, but who knows? We'll have to see where they play out from there. I know a lot of people are also saying, but like I'll, I'll but I, but I will say that I did think it was just a tease. I think they're setting up the Survivor yeah. Series of. Shield and the Wyatts versus Brian and Ponk and probably Cody and Goldust and some other dude. Actually, no, they uh, or at least for the time being, they announced that for uh, for Survivor Series is going to be CM Punk and Daniel Bryan going up against Rowan and Harper in just a two on two tag match. They did that which, last year though too. Yeah. Then they they condensed all those feuds. Into yeah. The match. Which I think I think that would work just fine. Uh, you know, Wyatts and Shield going up against Brian and Punk and Usos and Rhodes family. Yeah, that's fine. If they, if they're just gonna do tag matches, that's fine too. Because that'd be a good six on six Survivor Series matchup. Oh, see, I I don't, I don't, I don't like the idea of just doing the triples. Mm. Like, I'd rather if they're gonna do it, like, because like, who do you stick with, Brian and Punk? I think it's weird. You just shove a guy with them, just to shove a guy with them. No, you do it. a six on six. You've got the Wyatts and Shield, so that's six. Well, I was thinking five on five, like. Isn't what's his name is still hurt, and you'd probably do just the tag team Wyatt? with Wyatt. Bray, isn't Bray still hurt? No, he, no he's he been cleared. Okay. Yeah, he's he's good to go now. Uh, and then you have Punk and Brian, Usos, and then Cody Rose and Goldust. So that'd be a good six on six. Yeah, see, it feels like Usos are just tossed in there though, and I like the yeah. Usos, but it feels like they're an afterthought. They're like, we need to round out a team. Yeah. I would like to find for them to find a way to make them feel important to the feud. Well, they have been having their differences with the Shield. That's true. Uh, and, you're you're and, right. They've had they've had about they've had like three good matches with the Shield. Too. You're mm -hmm. you're totally right. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. 
So, uh, yeah, I know a lot of people are asking for that. Who knows how they're how they're going to play out over the next couple of weeks leading into the Survivor Series. Maybe we will get that that matchup after all. So, uh, who knows? We'll have to just tune in and find out. So, uh, but time to go into some hot topics. Um, you know, we might make it a thing again, but just for this week, we're going to just graze over Total Divas. Uh, one guy, it. Justin... Um, said he really wanted to see it and we appreciate you weighing in justin that's yeah. uh, very cool i'm glad that that you got something out of us rambling yeah. on like assholes <laughs> uh for however long we did that um it's been kind of a long day for us we're not going to do like super in depth if a lot of people like really want it back if people weigh in and say like we want that shit back then we'll do it but other than that i think we're probably just going to kind of like gloss over so it. in the comment in the comment box you need to put either Yes to Total Divas or no to Total Divas. You need to, and I mean, you need I, to specify. I'll just say yes or no. I'm going to bring back and be like, Total Divas. I'm going to be like, what the fuck are all these yeses and noes for? Like, yeah. so if That's you what want, I said. Why don't you bring back, polls? bring back Total Divas. They, Why don't you make one of those polls? They, they stopped. They took that out. Where Plus, we can't then do that you have to like rerun them all the time because not everyone's on when they're on. Or yeah. Wow. Just say, uh, if enough people weigh in, we'll consider bringing the segment back. But so far, only one person was like, yeah, I really like it. And Justin, thank you for waiting. Yeah, we appreciate, appreciate it. it. But uh, I think for now, we're just going to kind of gloss over. Just say no. Uh, Avery, you didn't watch it, did you? Yeah, I did not. Um, It was kind of, they're kind of more or less picking up where they left off. There was a whole thing about uh, Natalia was like super whiny because she worked a match and uh, Trinity like carelessly worked her and like hit her in her bladder which made her piss her pants a little bit and she was like super embarrassed and she ran out of the ring and like it was this whole like running gag throughout the show where like people were just like coming up and like like alicia fox was like heard you piss your pants she's like how did you know it was like this whole fucking thing and it was like really whiny and like really stupid and like and there was like set up this thing where i guess like nikki's telling Cena about it he's like yeah i mean i shit my pants in a match once because i was had like food poisoning and I went out to work anyway and I like shit my pants and she was like that's fucking sick why are you telling me this <laughs> and he was like, like why are you telling me Natalia you pissed your pants right and uh <laughs> so there was that whole thing um uh there was like some like <sighs> I guess like intergroup fighting over um Eva Marie's Maxim photo uh just some general cattiness between the ladies where she was kind of like rubbing it in and thinking she's hot shit and they're like oh you're not really that hot sh hot a shit lady we like the bells were like, hey, you know, we were on Maxim Espanol, and she was like, oh, but not this one. And she was like, well, the cool thing about Maxim Espanol is it goes to more countries, and they're just kind of like, rah, 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 rah. like, <laughs> you know, we're better than you. You're not better than us. You are better than us. They were just like hating on each other a lot, and uh, like more. Ariana and Vinny got back together like oh, shit. At, at the end of last season before they cliffhangered they like made it out because he was there for her at a time that Ariana is so mean to Vinny Vinny yes. is like my he's like fucking awesome I love Vinny like they were doing some like red carpet event thing or whatever and it's like Vinny was over there like nobody was taking pictures of him or nobody was like whatever but he was just on the red carpet like posing it up like looking hard and like, <laughs> that's I, awesome yeah Vinny I like Vinny because he's like he's silly but he's like I, he's a dude I would like want to get drunk with and, like hang out and she's always like you're embarrassing me. You're embarrassing me. You're embarrassing me. Like <laughs> all the time. She like hates him. But then he's like, but he's always like, babe, why you got to be like that with me? He's like, I just love you. And I just want to be there for you. And I'm like, and she's just like, you're fucking embarrass me at work all the time. And he's like, babe, I love you. And then like when she's sick, he's always like, yo, I don't care. Even if we broke up, I was like, I love you. I just want to I'm gonna be there for you no matter like, what. Aw. And he's like, oh, Vinny's like the best dude. And she's like always hating him. And you're it's like, a, it's a what the fuck cycle. is wrong with you, Ariana? Repeating the cycle. <laughs> oh, yeah. She, yeah. She had to go talk to her mom about her anger issues, but she had a bad up <laughs> upbringing and she realized that not a bad, she had a, not a smooth upbringing and mm. she realized she gets a lot of anger problems from her family and Does she lash out. She lashes out at Vinny all the time, even though he just wants to love her. And Vinny's fucking cool. Vinny, call me, dude. We'll get some drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I got your back, bro. <laughs> he is though. He's always like yeah, he I acts agree. stupid, but then he's yeah. like, it's like, babe, what's wrong? What? He's like, I just want to be there for you. Which was the other Funkadactyl? Uh Trinity. Does she have anything cool or witty to say? Because I know. Every, oh, like at the beginning uh, of the show, they were like, uh, it was like leading up to Ariane's like, uh, like anger problems. That her and John were riding with her in a car. There was a car going too slow, and she fucking like gets out. They kind of played into like, 
the whole thing because she was um like a car was going too slow so she fucking like gets out and like gets out and like starts fucking yelling at the guy in the in the fucking car and he, she's like oh you're gonna call me a bitch and like blah 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 and he's like i didn't hear the guy call her a bitch but she was like oh don't call me a fucking bitch stupid ass and then like it was like a whole thing and they're like yo you've got anger problems like trinity <laughs> trinity was a girl who was like you got problems she's like you know you're my girl and everything but you know you treat Vinny like shit <laughs> and uh she drops it real yeah at the end like Ariane <clears throat> makes it up to her and by like having some like romantic thing which somehow also trinity and uh john are invited to uh, and she kind of apologizes to them for going off in the car because they're like, we're going to get fucking arrested because they had to like grab her ass and like put her back in the car. And, uh, so it was like a whole thing, but yeah, Ariana start treating Vinny right. You're wrong. You're wrong. I'm just telling you you're wrong. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> so anything else from, uh, from this week? Nah. Of, uh, total divas. Pissing and shitting. <laughs> anger problems. <clears throat> Vinny being cool. Uh, no, I think we got it. Okay. Anything from uh, Maxim, the, Maxim, Maxim. Anything from JoJo? Uh, she was just kind of there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I felt like she'll... that's how they treat her because, like, she she hasn't been on Raw. I haven't heard of her on SmackDown. She kind of feuds with even Marie, mm. but like quietly. She like quietly feuds. Okay. So make sure, folks, in the comment section of the show, post whether you want Total Divas talk to return or not. That went way so much longer than I did. We might as well. We we pretty much just did the fucking segment. I don't know why I was like. Okay. You want to just like throw it, throw in the, the segment. No, we don't have to. Jingle. No, they don't get that unless they say oh, they okay. want. So it. they have to. <laughs> do you want the jingle, and then we'll talk about it, or do you just want them to talk about it? So. Now we're probably like if people if not enough people weigh in, we're probably just gonna like talk about it anyways. Like, but more <laughs> wait, like way more condensed, way more. Condensed. Oh, okay. So or try go. to be way more condensed. So post, you know, I want so now total. Show, motherfucker. That's a lot to say. So make sure you put in the comment section either I want the total diva segment back or I do not want the total diva. Show your support back. for Vinny. Yes. Gals and gals. Team Vinny. So uh, someone contact Vinny. And he can get. So a, if you're Facebook listening page. to this, do they call him Vinny? It's Vin. I know his name's like Vincent, but they, she calls him Vinny, right? Yeah. So if you're listening to this, comment regardless, just so we know. So uh, another hot topic, if you didn't hear, Cassius Ono, a.k.a. Chris Hero, has been released from his contract with WWE. There's been a lot of talk as to as to why and how and all that, but we won't get into that. But, uh, you know, he, he did release a statement saying no hard feelings, and, you know, I'm hoping hoping that maybe in time I'll get another shot with Come him. Come back stronger. He yeah. says he left there in good terms. Yeah. So, you know, best of luck for him. And, uh, and uh Hopefully, we will get to see him coming up uh, yeah. during WrestleMania weekend at the indie events. Definitely. That'd be awesome. So, uh, we'll have to see. But, uh, you know, going into the uh, the final hot topic for the evening in re regards to WWE 2K14. Having a lot of bugs, huh, Tyler? Yes. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, a lot that I've noticed is in universe mode. Mm -hmm. Uh See, you can create rivalries, and um, and you can do it for a short amount of weeks, medium or long. But in the news area, like after you do a match and something happens, um, things will pop up. I already posted a picture on our Facebook page, yeah. but like random stuff will happen. Like, <laughs> say I'm doing, uh, I did Randy Orton versus uh, Daniel Bryan. Well, all of a sudden, I played the match, mm -hmm. and at the end, Randy, um, what was it? Daniel Bryan, one he they just walked out or whatever. Uh, no, no, at the beginning he did the thing where he put his hand out and Randy Orton uh, didn't shake it and hit his hand and he walked off. Ooh. Uh, but after that, in the news area, uh, it said, "Oh, uh, Daniel Bryan saved Randy Orton from a beating from so and so." I was like, "That didn't happen." Mm -hmm. <laughs> or you'll see like what I said. Uh, what? Oh, uh, like, yeah, there's, I don't know what a clue what he's doing. <laughs> Doug's making hand gestures, trying to use letters or something. I don't know what that is. Uh, I know there was a T and an S or something. Toasty? Is that what you're, T, A, C, O, tacos. Tacos. He wants some tacos. <laughs> he's trying to give you the wrap it uh, up, uh -uh. you know. Wrap uh, it up, B. Wrap it up. 
But uh, like in that picture, it said Seamus and Seamus's feud with Oksana and Oksana has exploded out of control. Like you can't fight a, if you're a guy. You can't fight a woman in that game. You can't. Um, let alone two of the yeah, same person. Yeah. There's been other stuff like the the announce um, commentators like people will say stuff that doesn't contain to the match. Uh, there's been three or four times where whoever I'm playing as their arm goes back out of nowhere and they're like like a crippled person. Uh, just this random stuff. So it's mm-hmm. a little it's more glitches that I, that's been in the past games, but it's not enough for me to put it down. And I've seen people post on that picture this like stupid ass shit. Uh, like, oh, that's why I'm not going to play the game. Well, mm-hmm. I think because you're judging because that picture, um, it is really a good game. And I'm sure they're working on a patch. They're working on a patch on certain things, but like, it's not enough to put, put it down, to be honest with you. It, it's a good game. Um, if you say that, like, oh, I'm not going to play it because it's stupid. And you complain you want another wrestling game. You know, there's no alternative, by the way. This is the only wrestling game. Unless you go to, like, last year. or Last year. What I mean is, like, there's no competition yeah. for it. So mm-hmm. that's all you got. And it's really not a bad game. So, yeah. And they did release new DLC as well. Yes. A lot of uh, NWO members. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's it. So you got Scott Hall, Kevin oh, Nash. Yeah, well, actually, uh, you got, yeah, you got the NWO, Scott Hall, and Kevin Nash. Uh, Six Pac, Kurt Hennig. Um... Macho Man, Scott Steiner, Giant, and then you also have the Outsiders, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. So all in all in the game, you have three Scott Halls and three Kevin Nashes in the game. That's way too many. Yeah. So. Three uh, big shows. And Undertakers. And Triple H's. No, nope, and... only two Triple H's. Oh, there's three Undertakers, though. Me. Okay, well, there you go. So, uh, so yeah, so, you know. Almost like, almost like clockwork. Um, as I was <laughs> about an hour ago, as I was probably ranting about people who irrationally hate John Cena, a grown man worker who uh, we don't necessarily know, but who we have seen enough times is ranting about John Cena, who's significantly older than me, is ranting about John Cena like a lunatic. Oh, wow. Where? Uh, on Facebook. Oh, interesting. Not necessarily like a lunatic, but irrational hate. For sure. Hmm. Might have to check that out. Should. Okay. So, uh... <laughs> I'm laughing and rolling my eyes at him. Do we want to name drop, or... Are you telling oh, me he's... later? Um... He's certainly... He's certainly someone we've, like, called out as being a bigot, like, several times. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I know who. <laughs> You're still friends with him? No, I, David or somebody else, somebody else was commenting on it, oh. telling him he's a lunatic, or telling him he's irrationally is like not. They live in Canada. No, 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 not oh, that okay. guy. Not that All guy. Right. Oh, okay, got gotcha. Rudy, even Rudy Boy Gonzalez is like, dude, you're an idiot, like on his <laughs> own feet. All right, so uh, yeah. Anywho, don't worry about all that. We'll discuss that off the show but uh time to go into the q a portion of the show your questions are answers the only question coming to us this week from thomas drop it low son drop it low son drop it drop it low son saying <laughs> add a little something to the end mm-hmm. okay so uh drop it low, son. Ask, <laughs> asking if you could design a team for survivor series <laughs> i thought you wanted some tacos taco taco son <laughs> Bring me tacos, little son. Bring the taco <laughs> sauce. Bring the taco, taco, taco sauce. They so, don't fucking make tacos in the UK, right? Yeah, I'm sure they do. They don't know how to do it right, probably. Use different different beef or something. So, um, what do you mean different beef? Different meat. How about like that? Donkey meat? What are you talking about? I know. What do you what mean, mean different meat? I don't know. There's beef or there's chicken. So Thomas says if you could design a team for Survivor Series where each man is from a different era, who would you pick and why? You need one main from the Federation era, the New Generation era, the Attitude era, the Ruthless Aggression era, and the Modern era. That's tough. Um, modern What's... era, Dan O'Brien. Ooh. Um, Ruthless Aggression... I'll say Eddie Guerrero. Okay. Attitude error, I'm going to say um, man's man, Regal. Okay. Hard hat and everything. 
I saved him specifically for that spot. Okay. Um, let's see. New Generation. Does Owen count as part of New Generation? He was kicking around then. Yeah. I'll, I'll say Owen. Okay. And fuck, I'll say Macho for the Federation. Oh, nice. Oh, listen to me. I sound like some fucking smarky fucking asshole on the internet. Like, these are my super work rate guys. No, there's just someone that you would like to put in the team. There's nothing wrong with I that. I fucking hate my answer. Fuck me for being so stupid. Make you humble. So, how about you, Tyler? Um, I will pick modern era. It would also uh, depend on who were they're going up against. I uh, think that would make a good uh, modern decision. era. Um, I'll pick Seamus. Okay. Uh, ruthless aggression. Uh, Kurt Angle. Yeah. Uh, ruthless aggression is like 2002 ish to like 2007 ish. Attitude era. Uh. Ken Shamrock. Okay. That's so good. It should have been mine. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't understand new generation. Uh, that's like the Sean Brett era, Yoko, shit like that. Oh. It's like after the big, like, 80s, early 90s, like your Hawks, Hogan's, and your Machos, and your. Oh, Warriors. shit. Like, uh, I don't know. Think, think like Razor, Diesel, yeah, Sean, that, that Brett, Yoko, that era. Yeah. Doink the Clown. I'm really not familiar with. Too much of that air. Uh, why not Yokozuna? Uh, Ooh, nice. Uh, Federation. Yoko's pretty fucking good too. I yeah. like. Wait, go through. Go for start again. What are your picks? Yeah, Sheamus, uh, Kurt, Kurt Angle. Angle, Ken Shamrock, Yokozuna. I'm like in love with you having Yoko and Ken Shamrock. Those are good <laughs> fucking picks. And the new Federation or the Federation era. Sorry. Um. Ricky Steamboat. Is that it? Nice. Yeah. Nice team. Yeah. Uh, crap. Fucking Yoko and Shamrock are good picks. Yeah. I was either going to go with Fuck Shamrock you. or Bl uh, I like Steve. Shamrock. No, what's Steve Blackman? He's not part of that area. Significantly it was less good of a pick. But. Yeah. Uh, modern era, <laughs> Cesaro, Ruthless Aggression, hmm. Shelton Benjamin, uh, Attitude Era, The Rock. New Generation, Bret Hart, and Federation, I'll do Macho Man as well. I think that'd be pretty good. Pretty good teams, yeah. Mm -hmm. God, Not too bad. <laughs> I mean, if you want to make a change. No, I don't want to change. Okay. Because now it's tainted by Tyler <laughs> <laughs> having superior picks to Yokozuna, Ken Shamrock, Seamus. <laughs> yeah, I'm still in Yoko and Shamrock. <laughs> So there you See, go. Aber had like good picks with like not being like a douchey like smarky smart mark about it. Yeah, like these are good book read guys. Like that's how immediately after I said mine, I'm like, oh fuck me for, <laughs> I need to quit being a basement dweller and go. Well, they you know it was one. Some, just I didn't want to pick CM head. Punk. I didn't. Yeah, like you know, well, there's nothing like, wrong with that. You I was like, let me want. go some like because I was like, yeah, let me do Sheamus. Yeah, and Sheamus yeah. is a good pick. Yeah, so nothing wrong with that. So there you go. I'm not in love with your Seamus pick. I'm I'm in love with your Shamrock and your Yokozuna <laughs> picks. Clearly. So uh so there you, there, there you go. Max Mini. Max. Yeah. So uh so thanks for the uh question. Submit your Although questions. I like Seamus just fine. Head on over to our Facebook page, WNS Podcast, our YouTube page, pictures, WNS Video. Check us out on WrestlingNewsource.com, WrestlingNewsource.com on Facebook, and subscribe to us on Kurt iTunes. Kurt Wrestling Curtis Axel and News Kurt Podcast. Excuse me. Yeah, you could have, but you didn't. I know. But I so, didn't I and uh, and post your comments on who you would have in the in the Survivor Series. Yeah. So and we also do want to give a big shout out, big thank you to our good buddy John from Nightmare Pro Wrestling for the uh, for the best versus the beast. If prints. you don't know what we're talking about, look at our page. Yeah, we're gonna post a picture of that badass prints. Go pick one up. NightmareProWrestling.com. dot com. Thank you very much, John. It was very nice for you to see yes. We really appreciate them. They're very cool. You should go pick up some of your own. And also, you know, Christmas. Not you specifically, John. You have them. Yes. Other people should so, go take them. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, Christmas is right around the corner. If you're a wrestling fan or if you know someone who is a wrestling fan or, you know, who would just like a championship title, get a customized championship title by going to asteroidbeltcompany.com. Get the support 
of our good buddy Eric Kanishny. I think Eric has a promotion going on right now that if you order one in the month of November, you get a free shirt. Like with hey, it. there you I go. Think, don't don't quote me on it. Yeah, I may be wrong. Go look at his page or go go hit him up on Twitter yeah. at Asteroid BC. Uh, I think he has a promotion. You get a free shirt with a belt for this month. Badass. Go and check also, that out if you want to see stuff. Um, see our belts, or yeah. he also he made a belt for John for mm-hmm. Nightmare Pro Wrestling. Check out his belt; and it's good, really good, sweet looking. Yes, good stuff. I mean, it's Great the belt work. from the the book. It's yeah. super cool. Yeah. So. Great work. Um, also, we are on Twitter at WNS Podcast for the main site WN Source. Uh, also on Stitcher, and also um, Stitcher. I just want to say uh, I'm sorry to all the people under 25 <laughs> who I offended you. Um, I just. It's not that I didn't mean it. It's just that I didn't mean it to sound so shitty. And uh, it's like a rite of passage for you guys. I get it. I did it myself. And, uh, yeah, so I'm sorry. Like, I'm not kissing your ass. If you're going to like our page or stop listening, then fuck it. Go, gra- 